Well, it's a Friday, so there's some good things on the show, and there's some bad things on the show. Let's just say Justin Fields and Matt Nagy cost me, um, cost me some pride, and I'm a big baby about it on today's episode. Like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The football season's a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something brand new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And we want to thank Bird Dogs. If you don't know who Bird, Bird Dogs are, Bird Dogs are the guys that make the incredibly comfortable built-in underwear shorts. Underwear pants, in the shorts. Super comfy. And now they got joggers. What are joggers, you ask? Well, they're sweatpants, <laughs> but they look like regular pants. Joggers are classy sweatpants. You don't oh, have yeah. to jog with them, though. You, do you? wear those. No, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you could. Goodness, I can't. Um, <laughs> but if I did, they have built in underwear, super comfortable, and I can wear them outside and not look like an idiot. Does that Thank mean you, you can go to the dogs. bathroom inside of them? I don't think that's what it oh, means. Okay. But oh, I mean, they're you not can. diapers. They're not. You okay. can. Um, you they're can, built in underwear. But they're, they are super comfortable. Here's what you should do. You should go to birddogs.com, enter the promo code FANTASY, and they'll throw in a free bird dogs whistle tip football. Remember those Nerf Vortex oh, yeah. footballs? Oh, yeah. yeah. You could throw them over the mountains. Yeah, that's the one you're going to get. That's birddogs.com, promo code FANTASY, and boom, a free bird dogs whistle tip football with your pair of bird dogs. You will not. Take these things off. I promise. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, October 1st, our last show before week four. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Ride. I'm Andy Holloway. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Wheel of Shame coming back today. Yes, it is. <laughs> it Every Friday. And it makes the full rotation. Uh, Jason will be on the wrong end of it. Well, it's a wheel, right? So it just goes running around. Next week, Andy, it'll be back to you. I doubt Hopefully. it. I doubt it. I'm on a hot streak right now. Things yeah. are going right in my life. You just said that out loud. So, <laughs> Oh, is that the curse? That's it. We're done. Once you claim it. Yeah, you're right, actually. That's how it'll work. Uh, fantasy face-off at the end of the show today. We'll, we'll reveal our lineups, and Jason will spin the wheel of shame, and you will not want to miss it. The fantasy forecast, more of the matchups on today's show as well. Some news to get into. Not really great news. I mean, just basically injury rumor news. Yeah, it's it's funny. I was lamenting Monday news. Monday news is always awful because it's all the injuries that happened. I feel like Friday news should be this guy is ready, this guy is ready. But this week is this week is not like that. This yeah, week something is happened like, at the practices. Yeah, I mean, Jamison Crowder's back. Yeah. All right. Get the good I, news out of the way right spoiler now. Spoiler alert. Yeah, come on, man. I had a whole Jamison Crowder big reveal planned. <laughs> <laughs> Mike has been saying to stash him. So uh, jointhefoot.com is our fantasy football community. You get a bonus weekly show, tons of uh, in-season tools, resources, including the stream tool. Uh, we just added support for customized scoring for, for the Foot Clan over in our rankings on the website. So check that out. Become a part of the fantasy football community at jointhefoot.com. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Speaking of the community over at Join the Foot, we give them something special for free every single week. Alvin Kamara's signed jersey from pristineauction.com is going to Koopa Cup of Coffee. Oh, over on Patreon. Congratulations. You are the winner. Uh, you are a very special person. You are, and you've been great in my lineups. Go to pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit if you want to get your own swag over there. And a uh, quick shout out to the Foot Clan for supporting the show. We took home our fifth best sports podcast award 
last night at the podcast awards. So thank you very much for supporting the show. I I don't think we're eligible to win anymore. I think I this was I think this was the we'll cap. See. I thought it was you have to win five in a row, and we strategically took one year out, mm-hmm. so we're five oh, in the last six. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, and they, they they have to be keeping track, and if they're not keeping track, you can snick, sneak a sixth one in snick? there. Snick, you can snick a sixth one in. Remember there. Snick Saturday Night Nickelodeon? No. Are no. you afraid of the dark? No. Never watched what? it. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I didn't. Uh, we couldn't afford cable, so. Every time you bring up Nickelodeon, there is a site. Like, if I went to see a therapist, this would be part of my story. It's how jealous I was of people that had cable I didn't know television. I was hanging out with the serfs. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Us up in the oh, castle. Oh, yeah. We yeah. had those 99 channels. You had more TVs and <laughs> cable than you could. Did you have the? You probably were the guy that had the oversized giant satellite dish in the backyard. No. No? No. They could, could watch the games from. You could tune into. I do remember that, that happening and being a thing, though. Like, that those satellite was so gigantic. They were, gigantic. Oh, they were like industrial, <laughs> commercial, like satellites that you could like walk on. There's no way those were safe either if you were around them. Um, we had a Thursday night football game. Another great one went down to the wire. I, I mean, it kind of started poorly. The Bengals, For bu- the Bengals, the yes. Bengals bus showed up at halftime, but. Uh, 24-21, Cincinnati goes to 3-1, and one. Jacksonville loses a tough one, and they, they probably could have locked this game down if, if not for the, what, six inches that separated Trevor Lawrence from another touchdown earlier in the game. Yeah, it and- was, uh, I love them going for it. Don't, do not get me wrong. I love that. The play call was They a went little, back to the same well. Yeah, it was a little curious that you went to that and Trevor Lawrence made the wrong read on the uh, the read option, and he got stuffed. So we had Carlos Hyde, a surprise inactive. Due this, to shoulder injury. Due to a shoulder injury. This meant that it was all James Robinson, 95% of snaps. Daria Gumbawale was out there for a couple meaningless snaps. And then DJ Chark ended up fracturing yeah. his ankle. He is uh, going to miss the season. So there was some injury news in this game. Uh, LaVisca Chenault took advantage of that, 6 for 99. And had a deep target, which was great because we've been talking about how much they've been which, using him you know, behind the line of scrimmage. That pass by Lawrence where he was – it was the harder. normal where roll, he's rolling out of bounds and generally the, the quarterback just follows that through and chucks it. And he, But he tossed it slightly back in bounds uh, to Visca, who was in single coverage. It was a great throw. So moving forward – you know, Dan Arnold is a target, in my opinion, right now, because they lost DJ Chark. This was his first game, and um, he was out there. They used the tight end a ton. We talked about James O'Shaughnessy. I think Arnold is somebody that you can look at as, interesting. A, as a flyer pickup moving forward without Chark involved in that offense. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. He wasn't like a full-time guy, but he caught both his targets, made a couple of splash plays. James Robinson the, looked great, though. Robinson is – it's – like I had moved past my uh, not not all of my my Urban Meyer rage, but I had moved past the stupidity of them drafting a a running back in the first round because you had you struck gold like you did what every team wishes they could do, which is get an undrafted player who is a more than capable starter, and then they decide, well, no, we need to draft a running back in the first round. It's stupidity, and then. They're like, well, we're going to have them split time with Carlos Hyde. We finally got the game, and we're reminded, guess who's really, really good at football? James Robinson was carrying your team to a victory. You, I mean, they managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory in this one, but it's going to be so frustrating. Next week, when Carlos Hyde is reactivated, and he's back out there for 30 to 40% of the snaps because you know what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it will. But I think what was nice is that we saw and were reminded that James Robinson is good because the truth is he's been good several weeks now. He, You know, he got a touchdown the week prior. Um, he, he looked good against Arizona. And I think this is a player that you can, you know, you can just rely on. I don't, I don't think this Carlos Hyde is... a Hyde turning is, point. Yeah, I don't think Carlos Hopefully. Hyde is going to eat into the workload to the tune where I'm unwilling to start James Robinson. Uh, do you like Joe Burrow, Mike? As a quarterback or as a person? 
Uh, either one. I don't know him, so okay. I can't speak to uh, his I personality. just thought maybe I could get you to like um, Urban by extension there, because it seems like Burrow likes Urban quite oh, a bit. Oh, I see what you did. I see. I'm trying to connect did. the dots. But uh-huh. Mixon ended up with a good game, 16 for 67 and a touchdown, but not the game you expected, not the game I expected, and then he got hurt. So now we have to monitor whether or not – And it's it's strange uh, – Mixon finally did get a third down in the second half. Uh, I recall seeing one, but it was all, in the first half, it was exclusively Samaj P. Ryan was their third down running back. It didn't mean he was getting touches or targets, but he's taking opportunity away from Joe Mixon. Career game for C.J. Uzama? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this will be his career game at the end. It'll look back to last night. You'll remember that Thursday? Tyler Boyd, 9 for 118 on 11 targets. Whew. And yeah. then Jamar Chase was fine, six for seventy-seven. That's not going to kill you. It's double digits in a half-point league. The, the big question is, what happened to Marvin Jones? Yeah, I mean, You're, if you told me that the Jacksonville Jaguars scored twenty-one points and they lose early in the game, it was, yeah, Chark, that was like the second play or something. It was very early. I mean, I'm 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 playing against you in the listener league, and I've got James Robinson and Marvin Jones. It should have been outstanding, and instead, it was like, okay, Marvin one good was, game, one bad game. Pretty good explanation for it. I mean, you leaned on James Robinson. You only attempted 24 passes. You had an early lead. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Going forward, I think Marvin Jones is going to be a very solid player. Also, if I don't know if you guys saw the play, and I'm 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 going to be uh, monitoring the the news going forward but did you see the play where Marvin Jones hurt his knee grabbed his knee oh no it was really early it was like one of the first plays of the game and I was like oh no that looked really bad the way that he fell and did the knee grab and you go oh you you just seen it too many times and then uh, didn't hear anything else about it but I'm I'm curious if uh you sure that wasn't DJ Char yeah yeah no I'm (laughs) just kidding uh anything else from this game you want to talk about before we move on Mm, nope News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Greg Roman, offensive coordinator for the Ravens, said Lamar Jackson is dealing with a back flare up and should be fine. So That's there you go. From the flip. Uh Antonio Gibson did practice today. He was a surprise. Did not practice. He practiced on Wednesday. Did not practice yesterday yeah. and practiced again today, dealing with a shin injury. His teammates, Curtis Samuel, also practiced. That's good. That's exciting. Josh Jacobs returned to a limited practice. John Gruden said he's not going to hesitate to put Peyton Barber into a primary role. We know that. We, we are well aware. He loves Peyton Barber. That Peyton Wait, Barber what? game might have actually damaged Josh Jacobs moving forward. Man, I thought we were misquoting. So Josh Jacobs came back. Limited. It limited, and then Gruden's like, "Yeah, I love Peyton Barber." <laughs> I mean, that's correct. What? <laughs> I love John Gruden. <laughs> He's quite the character. Yeah, uh, he was right though, right? Yeah, yeah. Gruden, Peyton Barber was yeah. was outstanding. Jonathan Taylor limited on Thursday with a knee injury again. Daryl Henderson remained limited on Thursday with the rib injury. We'll see if he plays. Yep. Dalvin Cook back out of practice. Limited with an ankle. Uh, what are the other big headlines here? Deontay Johnson practiced in full. Yeah, that's a big one. So going to siphon a few of the 650 targets. De- yeah. in Najee. Deontay practiced in full. Meanwhile, the other two guys, Juju and Claypool, were limited. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty ironic. Ugh. Also important, I think, is the Seattle uh, situation. Tyler Lockett didn't practice on Thursday, and DK Metcalf was limited on Thursday. And not to be outdone in that matchup, as soon as we saw the news about the two Seattle wide receivers mm-hmm. and said, well, you know, like the 49ers may end up, you know, winning this game. They're like, hold on a second. George Kittle didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday, and Kyle Shanahan came out this morning and said there's no guarantee he's playing. Gross. Mike referred to him as a very mm, it wasn't nice. disrespectful <laughs> George Brittle. He, look, I stand I stand by my statement. I mean, it's right there. It's- I feel like that thing, thats the paperwork has been drawn up for that nickname, but you shouldn't sign it until he misses the game. 
You know what I mean? That's like, fair. That's put fair. Put the pen in your hand. You're sitting over the over the papers. Just, just lick. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta make sure this ink is flowing. Yeah, but uh, but just don't sign it unless he misses the game. Okay. But that would be a huge disappointment, and that was one of the things that potentially separated Waller from Kittle in draft season. Mm-hmm. Was if you were making a decision between them, and you were worried about injuries, which that's that seems like it's a San Francisco thing at this point. Yeah. The the. The 49ers have not been able to stay healthy. Uh, I mean, even Elijah, their quarterback. Elijah Mitchell um, was also limited again. Kyle Shanahan said uh, status is in limbo. I don't know how you could trust. I, I mean, I would I would expect Elijah to probably miss that game. If, I mean, if you're looking at a desperation pivot at tight end at this point, do you just pivot to his replacement? Like, would, would Ross Dwelly end up with enough work to make you happy? Would you go to a Will Disley with Everett maybe missing the game? Would you go to I would, somebody else like Evan Ingram? I would rather go with Evan Ingram or Will Disley. Okay. What if I mentioned that Jack Doyle has missed Wednesday and Thursday's oh, practice? That's big. That's gigantor. It's oh gigantor. Mo oh, Ali Cox, dog? <laughs> Probably not. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but he's huge. Uh, hey, Brooksy, anything else big that you want to talk about? Well, we, we do know that Elijah Moore has been ruled out with the concussion, and Jason ruined it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the news that Jameson Crowder was limited in practice. Do you want me to act like I haven't heard it before? Yeah. Yeah, let me, Guys, let me go back. All right, tell me the news. So Elijah Moore is out. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Opening up some slot snaps. For Jamison Crowder. What? Wait, he's, he's playing? He's back. Jamison? I think he might play. He is expected to play. You want to know who else is expected to play and be active? Is uh, Denzel Mims. So, okay. Uh, okay. Mims okay. the word on that interest. All I mean, right. we're not we're not Are you playing uh Crowder? I would totally maybe play him. I would <laughs> not. I'm still hesitant. I know Braxton Berrios has certainly been uh, a, a heavily targeted player. Um and they oh. could use Crowder. I just I'm I'm taking a wait and see approach on that. I think Crowder will take everything that Barrios was getting instantaneously. Yeah, and which I wasn't playing Barrios, so there is something to be said there. And Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton did not practice on Thursday. Uh, the one thing, the last thing I'll say in the news before we move on, uh, we we talked about Daryl Henderson remaining limited. Um, the matchup against the Cardinals is very very good. So if Sony if Sony Michelle would be a a Smash star. I would start him over um, really good options if if, if Daryl misses that game. Also, I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, Jamie Socrata was activated and is going to be available. What? Whoa, whoa, man. <laughs> this week? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, jointhefoot.com. You can get the Injury Blitz podcast that comes after the practice reports on Friday from our very own Matthew Betts. He's a heck of a guy, isn't he? Oh, heck Matthew of a Betts. guy. Oh, he's the Betts. Uh, the birthday boy. <laughs> yesterday? I'm pretty sure it was yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So not so his he's birthday not anymore. not a birthday boy. Thanks, Brooks. <laughs> Where were you yesterday? Hey, guess what? It's not my birthday today either. Oh, me too. <laughs> Jason, don't you celebrate birthday a week? Yeah, but it's the, it leads it's up to the Jason, birthday. It's for Jason, though. It's, it leads up ah, to it, and okay. it's exclusive for me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Bets. <laughs> yesterday. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. You know, you get Brooks a new microphone. Yeah, and he what is feels this? Like he, do what, he can do whatever he wants. Ridiculous. All right. Uh, download Sleeper, get their breaking alerts channel, and beat everybody else in your league to the latest news, which unfortunately is crazy important in fantasy football mm. because things are happening all the time. Shall we enter the forecast? Let's mm. go. Fantasy forecast. Yesterday's show, Washington, Atlanta, the Texans, the Bills, the Lions, the Bears, the Panthers, the Cowboys, the Colts, the Dolphins, the Browns, the Vikings, and the Giants Saints game. So we have eight games to cover today. And let's begin with the Tennessee Titans at 2-1, and one, taking on the New York Jets 0-3. DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Titans 6.5-point favorites on the road, over under of 44.5 points, so it's not up there. Um, we know the injuries. On the Tennessee side, ordinarily, this would be a really strong matchup for Tannehill uh, on the road with those guys active. Neither practiced on Thursday, talking about A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. I mean, what do you, you really 
do you just look another direction than Ryan Tannehill without his his weapons? Yeah, I, I I think you need to. Um, it's not to say he can't get stuff done, but this is this is one of those games where, I mean, how can the Jets stop Derrick Henry? I mean, the, let let's let's say that the Titans come out and said, "Man, we're we're missing our wide receivers. We're still going to throw the ball. There's there's still some options there to catch it, but that's not where you're special." What if we told the other team, "Let's hand we're going to hand the ball off 100 percent of the plays." If they told them that, and the Jets exclusively game plan for that i don't think they could stop it what if their plan was they just get out of derrick henry's way every single time and try see if he will actually get tired oh. like if, if they let him run in empty the gas tank four 80 yard sprints to the house does derrick henry then get tired so he can't do it anymore <laughs> these are great strategies i will pass them on to the <laughs> 0 and three jets uh, he really is the battering ram running back of football where you're trying to break into the castle and you just keep yep. just keep doing it and eventually they get tired, they the doors come down. Uh Henry, you obviously play. What about if you were facing Tannehill or a pivot to like Teddy Bridgewater against Baltimore? Would you stick uh, with Tannehill and find figure he finds a way? I would stick with Tannehill in that situation. If you could pivot to Kirk Cousins. Uh, versus the Cleveland Browns, I think I would do that. Yeah, one. or Derek Carr. I, th there are options um, that I w I would play over Ryan Tannehill. I, I would know you we play any Jets. Would I play any Jets? Sorry, you were probably saying something about Tannehill. Go ahead. Uh, no, I don't think I would play any Jets this week. I mean, you've got the revenge what about game Crowder narrative. on the way back. <laughs> Crowder, <laughs> he's here this week. That is incredible news. Um, no, I, I I wouldn't. If I were to play anybody, it would be probably. Corey Davis. I'm not playing anybody. I'm 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 O U T. I'm out. Um they they will have to pass the ball though because I think the Titans are going to um run them out of town. This stat on Derrick Henry is unbelievable. Did you see this in games where Tennessee was favored by seven or more points since twenty eighteen? He has averaged twenty four carries, hundred and forty two yards, one point three four touchdowns, including three forty five plus point fantasy performances. Oh man. But they're only favored by six and a half. Oh, did the line move? Oh, no. Oh, completely disregard it. <laughs> Throw it out that half a point. He's going to stink this week. Uh, it's On the Ten Hill question, you see this. The Jets' defense, since they're giving up so many points to running backs, they're only giving up 12.8 points to fantasy quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, Classic. And, which is second lowest. They are unneeded. They are completely unnecessary. At Once you're up by three scores, you don't need to throw the ball. This is why I'm not playing Tannehill. Yeah. Um, I do think, you know, if, if A.J. Brown and Julio Jones are out, um, you do have last week's sensation. Oh, I want to hear you pronounce it. Oh, man. Let's hear it. Oh. You don't know how. Oh. believe it is Nick Westbrook Akeen. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Mark. I know, I know. I and I just, I jumped in front of Thank it before you. you. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'd probably just avoid the passing game there. It hasn't exactly been a well-oiled machine through three weeks, anyways. Maybe the Jets aren't giving up as many fancy points to those positions because they give up about seven to fourteen to the defense every week. Mm -hmm. Uh, before we move on to the very exciting Chiefs Eagles matchup, want to thank today's sponsors for keeping this show going. And that includes our friends at Head & Shoulders. Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology, never not working. To give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Just had another great never not working segment talking about air yards yesterday, trying to find those breakout wide receivers. And uh, look, you want to protect yourself from flakes. That's what Head & Shoulders does. That's what that Scalp Shield technology does. It works day and night just like the greatest fantasy players in all of the land, day and night. No sleep. I haven't slept this year. I would recommend you do. I probably yeah, should. I I'm feeling very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, Your body's going to break down. Yeah, you're probably right. It's a longer <laughs> season, too. Uh, get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. And we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Rothy's. Ladies and gentlemen, big news in shoes. Rothy's is now selling men's sneakers and men's driving loafers. I have been wearing them. Look, you just and you you aren't loafing around. When no, you, when you're wearing the driving loafers, you look classy. If you look, if you hate when your favorite white sneakers or the light colored shoes that get dirty, 
Rothy's men's shoes are for you. They have an innovative washable construction. That means your shoes look new with every wash. Uh, they're helping out the planet. Look, they, their elevated styles achieved through innovative manufacturing and materials. If you're a sustainability fan like I am, their, their shoes are knit with 100% recycled materials. Even the sneaker laces are made from plastic water bottles. Uh, like Andy said, he's got a pair. I've got a pair of driving loafers. You know, I'm a sneaker guy, but sometimes you gotta you gotta change up the look, and you gotta throw on the the loafers. And look, they're they're comfortable, and they look good to help you welcome in the fall season in style. Rothy's is doing something special. That's right. They gave us the chance to share this super rare opportunity with with our listeners for a limited time. Right now, you can get twenty dollars off your first purchase at rothys.com slash footballers that's r-o-t-h-y-s dot com slash footballers head to rothys dot com slash footballers to find your new favorites today the kansas city chiefs the one and two kansas city chiefs travel to philadelphia to take on the one and two eagles sounds like they're both the same uh nope yeah. uh the dk sportsbook line kansas city road favorites by six and a half points the over under is 54 points that's what we like to see as fantasy players yes we do give us them points uh, the Andy Reid revenge game in Philadelphia, the return of Andy Reid, two straight losses. Uh, I don't want to bet against this Kansas City offense in this one, especially when we saw you know, some of the early season Eagle defense. Uh, I don't know. I think mirage. The, the Mirage might have uh, come down after this last week against Dallas. They're also on a short week compared to Kansas City. Look, I know we we came out and we thought that Kansas City was going to dispose of Baltimore. Yeah. And they didn't. But um, I, I'll take them. <laughs> I'll take them in this sure. one. And I think that you're going to see standard levels of production from all your favorites, Mahomes, Hill, and Kelsey. Probably a bounce back game for Hill. We know he's great on the road. He's had a couple quiet weeks in his uh, on the season in a row, but eight targets, 81 yards. That's what he averages on the road. That's I, crazy. But yeah. I do like Clyde. I think I like Clyde in this game. Yeah, Clyde is a fine running back, too. He's probably started everywhere. I mean, pretty much every week is going to be the same for for the Chiefs uh, so long as Patrick Mahomes is there, which is start two studs, and you need to start Clyde Edwards-Alaire because he's the starting running back of the best offensive football. But at least like they went to him early. Uh, it was nice. You saw 17 carries. He came through with a 100-yard rushing game. He finally looked good. He did look good. good. Like he, he finally passed the eye test where those first two weeks, it was woof uh, out there. So it, that was at least you know a positive sign here moving forward for Clyde. If you put him on your bench, like I, I benched Clyde last week because I wanted to see it. And he came through, so I'm willing to move Clyde back into that starting roster. On the other side, Jalen Hurts and and Devontae Smith, they are my co-starts of the week because you look at can what Kansas City is doing. They are uh, second worst at, at points allowed to the fantasy quarterback position. They are 25th best against fantasy wide receivers. Points <laughs> are going up against this team. Like the defense, they've been really they, bad. They, they have not figured it out yet, and I'm going to – I'm I'm not scared that the Kansas City Chiefs the Chiefs are going to come in and just completely shut down the Eagles' offense. Yeah, there the, will be fantasy points. The Chiefs score a lot of points, right? That's kind of what they do. They're one and two. That means they've been outscored twice. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I think uh, this should be a good matchup for most uh, most options. That I think the big question would be Miles Sanders off the down week. How confident are you in playing him or not playing him? Um, I would play Clyde over Miles. Yeah. Uh, but are are you comfy starting Miles, or would are you, you play, looking for a different option? Would you, you say you scooped him up, Chuba Hubbard? I would play you, Chuba. Okay, I I would too. What about uh like Kareem Hunt against the Minnesota Vikings? I would play Kareem. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it'll be okay for Miles this week. We have him ranked really close to Clyde on our consensus rankings. They're two spots apart. Uh, what about Zach Moss, Jason? Oh, I play Miles Sanders. Yeah, I would go Miles Sanders. Okay. All right, uh, what about Goddard after last week? Goddard's, if you could play them both. Oh, in, if you could play spot. Goddard's, yeah. heck yeah. If you can put him in the, the, the fly machine and transport him and turn him into one person, then maybe. If only you could, Mike. I know. All right, battle of the undefeated teams, the Arizona Cardinals going to L.A., taking on the Rams. Both teams 3-0. and 
DK Sportsbook has this game. We had a four, uh, 54 point over under. The Rams are four point home favorites. And uh, this is exciting. We get to see the shakedown of the NFC West this weekend because the Seahawks also play the 49ers. Implied point totals of 25 and 29 in this game. I Historically, McVay has outcoached Kingsbury in, what? in these matchups. You mean great coach who took his team to the Super Bowl is better than Cliff? Yeah, I mean, we, we, are, shocked. Cer- we are certainly in it as Arizona fans here. But uh, thus far this season, it's been impressive for Arizona on offense. The Rams' defense, at least fantasy points-wise, has not been what they were last year. I mean, last year they were number one against quarterbacks and wide receivers, five against running backs, ninth against tight ends. Through three games this year, one of them against Tampa Bay, the Super Bowl champs, you know, they're they're middle to bottom in terms of fantasy, fantasy points given up. So do you have any hesitation about Arizona options on the road? Anything that would change the way you would normally prescribe fantasy players to start? Them. Oh man, I, I I think the thing that I am more confident in um, Christian Kirk because of the hobbled nature of Hopkins. A little less confident in Hopkins, but you're he not moving bra- away. He practiced on yes, Thursday. and and you're not moving away from Hopkins. You're going to play him, but the combination of him being hobbled, Jalen Ramsey. Let's be clear: when you hear hobbled, I think people think leg injuries and limping around. He is recovering from a rib injury. He played last week. There aren't any signs this week that he's going to be limited. He practiced on Wednesday, which is not a normal thing for Hopkins anyway. I just want to bring some clarity there. Sure, yeah. Hobbled might be the wrong word, but coming off, still dealing bobbled. with the rim. What's that? Bobbled. Bobbled. Yeah. Oh, that's that sounds like really – that's not kind to a wide receiver because they don't want to – Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Uh, cobbled. He's ribbled, guys. <laughs> ribbled. There we go. We got there. I mean, <laughs> what? His ribs. Yeah. I know, I know. It's just – it's a funny word. Ribble is a great word. A shout out to Al Borland for coming up with that one. But um, I'm looking forward to buying the the board game. Ribbled. <laughs> so, hold on. Yeah. Oh, all right, guys. Wait, did I get 55 or did I get 55? I didn't crickets? hit 55. Did I? <laughs> I did. Al's nodding at me. I didn't. I thought you hit that. <laughs> nope. I've always. Always. Accidents happen, yeah. um, but like I, that joke, we would expect. I still don't get it, so that's great. We it just would, sounds like a board game name. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> 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 All right, that one was me. Um, oh my gosh! So the Rams are going to score. I, I, I don't think that the Cardinals' defense. I mean, that Week One performance against the the Titans was unbelievable. Since mm. that time, they have not looked like a a world beater, especially on the ground. Um, they've they've uh, not been great against running backs. So if they're scoring a lot of points, the Cardinals are going to have to throw the ball a lot. So this is where I do think uh, Christian Kirk is, is, the, is the target that I would go after outside of Hopkins. Yeah, that's a tough decision when you're looking at those other ancillary pieces in a very difficult matchup where Jalen Ramsey historically has always shadowed DeAndre Hopkins limited him to some very low output games, but he's been moving around this year. He may move into the slot and cover Kirk uh, a bunch in this one. So it's shaky at wide receiver, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Cooper Cup's always in your lineup. Stafford as well. And we'll see what happens with Daryl Henderson and Michelle. Uh, you almost – it's not, not that you wouldn't root for both guys to be healthy, but clarity-wise – if you knew early that you could put Michelle in there, it could solve a lot of problems for people. It could, but if, for me, if Henderson's playing, I'm playing him against Arizona. And if Henderson is out, then I am playing Sony Michelle. Robert Woods? That is the big question. Oh, we man. We benched him for Tyler Boyd. Um, we brought that up. I, I think that he is someone – let me ask you this. Would you play Robert Woods or Devonta Smith, uh, Mike? I'd play Smith. I think there's, I mean, the the floor. Well, I, Robert Woods' floor has been uh, uh, basement dwelling right now, but like the the ceiling for Devonte Smith is is much higher than Robert Woods right now. So I, that's where I would go. Hmm. Yeah, it's not been fun. I don't blame anybody for taking a break with Robert Woods. Tyler Higby. Cardinals have been really, really good against tight ends. They're giving up 2.9 points per game. 
but you drafted him to be your tight end, and he's performed thus far, so you probably just leave him there. Any other questions about this game? Mm. I don't think so. I hope we're not. I hope we don't end up with a defensive battle where we thought an offensive battle was going to happen, because I do think that's possible. I mean, Arizona, you know, last week Byron Murphy, defensive player of the week, uh, a couple of interceptions, and uh, the pressure will be the key here. Can you get pressure on Stafford? Hopefully, we get the fantasy extravaganza. The other NFC West game, the Seahawks one and two taking on the two and one 49ers. DK Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus three at home. Over under is 52. We've talked about some of the injury landscape in this game. What are the difficult decisions? Like Jason, what are you doing? Doing? <laughs> doing? <laughs> doing? <laughs> doing? What are you doing uh, with the 49ers backfield? Well, first of all, you you have to wait and see what's going on with Elijah Mitchell. If Elijah Mitchell is active, I will probably put him in my lineup. Uh, he was someone that people had to pay up for on the waiver wires, which means they probably needed him. Um, I would imagine if he's there, he's going to be in most lineups. I'm not worried about the Seahawks uh, defense. Currently on the year, they are the 32nd best um, against running backs, meaning they are very bad. They're giving up uh, 32 and a half points per game. Uh, a lot of Derek that. Henry. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of that was Derrick Henry. But um, if Elijah Mitchell is out, and like it's it, fantasy football gets crazy sometimes, you know, the, the running <laughs> like, backs. Just like promises. The, yeah, the running backs are very injured right now. If Elijah Mitchell is out, would you consider taking a sip? Of the juice. Oh, yeah. Kyle I mean, use check. Yeah, I would consider that. Yes, good. Although, he came to the like, show. He was. He split the backfield with Trey Sermon, and Trey Sermon. I would prefer didn't Sermon. look ready for the NFL. I'd prefer Sermon. Okay. Yeah, I, I because of the matchup, I'm okay pivoting to Sermon. If uh, yeah, PPR maybe in a PPR league, use check getting the targets. Hopefully, we get a, a great game here. Over under a fifty two. Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. This week we have them at uh, wide receiver 19 and 39. Ayuk is just a confidence play. I mean, you have to – if you put him in there, you I'm, have to just hope that he's okay. I'm ready. Like The snaps are there, so it, he's ready to be played. He may just give you like flex-level numbers, but he's – I think he's back to his – status of it's Debo and, and Brandon Ayuk. I, I would agree, and especially if Kittle is out, yes. they would they would need Ayuk even more. I would imagine that the Seahawks are going to be able to score. I would play Brandon Ayuk over Robert Woods uh, in, in these okay. two matchups here. All right, uh, Metcalf Lockett, if they're active, they're in. Chris Carson, he's just been solid. RB 22, 15, mm -hmm. and 19. If you're tracking things at home and maybe you picked up Alex Collins as insurance – Travis Homer got a lot of play last week. I just want to bring that up. Yeah. So if you're looking for insurance on Carson, Russell Wilson completing 73% of passes. It's pretty good. It, it's kind of crazy because he's been great. The receivers have been great. Carson's been great. The new offensive coordinator looks fine. They're one and two. They could go, drop to one and three on the road this week. Mm -hmm. And it's like. You hate to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, you hate to see it because then, Jason, that would mean the 49ers are three and one. Are you traveling to uh um, Can this game tie? Are you we... traveling to Disneyland? Um heck yeah, man. <laughs> you just want the drop. I'm not I don't just want the drop. I, I think it's a good play. Now I'm not starting him in my regular leagues, but if I'm playing a DFS game and I want a cheap shot at a touchdown, oh yeah, I'm going to Disneyland. All right. Uh... Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh will Disley or Ross Dwelly if Kittle sits? Disley. Disley. Yeah, Gerald Everett on the reserve COVID list. I wouldn't expect him to play. The Ravens at 2-1 and one take on the 3-0. and oh. Denver Broncos. Impressive. I feel like the Broncos have kind of done what they're supposed to do so far mm -hmm. in the season. Um, they're not a team that I know that I think has been put to the test quite yet. <laughs> you, you don't think so? No. <laughs> you know, interesting. I think they've really been up against it against the Giants, Jaguars, and Jets. Mirage? Full Mirage? I don't think it's a full Mirage. I mean, they've looked good, but they haven't been tested. This is really where we're going to find out what, you know, who who are the Denver Broncos? Well, starts with Teddy Bridgewater. By the way, the DK Sportsbook line here, Baltimore minus one. The line opened at Denver minus one. Uh, Over-unders, 44 and a half. Quick update on Lamar. Practice will be, will be fine. Will play. 
I see a miniature fist bump on, or a fist pump on the other side yeah, of the desk. That was, that Somebody was, that has Lamar. That was just a st- stupid thing. Like you knew Lamar was going to play, but I you don't I, want it in the back. I, of your I mind. didn't need a, a didn't practice all week. Lamar. You don't want to be picking up yeah. a quarterback on Sunday morning yes. to have to start. So far, the Baltimore defense dealing with injuries has not been what it was last year. Denver is at home. A couple of great running backs to uh, pound the rock with. Corlin Sutton, Tim Patrick, and Noah Fant, my start of the week. What do you guys think? Do you have do you have Baltimore winning this game? Do you have Denver winning it? It's it's tight, obviously, by way of uh, the sports books. I'm going to take the home team here. It is. I, I think it's going to be a very, very close game. Um, the, the Ravens coming off of their incredible 66 yard field goal victory over the Lions. They didn't look impressive to me. And, uh, like I said, we don't know exactly who the Denver Broncos really are because they haven't been tested. Uh, but I think they're wanting to show the world that they're legit. And I think they're, that, that they are, their defense is very, very good. And they have so many pieces on offense. Granted, they've lost KJ Hamler and uh, Jerry Judy, but, um, yeah, I think I think they'll get it done, and the Ravens' rushing defense has not been great. So Melvin Gordon and Javonta Williams, I think, will do enough, not necessarily for fantasy, but for the Broncos. It's a wild world that uh, you you don't think of the Denver Broncos as they're not the Kansas City Chiefs. Words. I want to start every single person on that offense, but you're kind but, of fine with it. But, but it, it, Teddy Bridgewater is a stream, but yeah, Gordon, I both Gordon and Javonta Williams, they're you know they're sharing. Everything pretty much 50-50. I think that they're both worth worth playing. Cortland Sutton, I mean, it was a down week after the huge week two explosion, but 23% target share. And then you have fireballed Tim Patrick, who has, over his last 16 games, scored in double digits 10 times. Like, he's just a good player. That's crazy. And no offense, like, this is, this, is a, <laughs> this is a really strange situation that I am comfortable playing every single fantasy piece of the Denver Broncos against the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, but you're not excited about any. You're just there. They are decent sure, options. Would you play Fant or Gronk? Gronk. Okay. Going back to yeah, New England. I mean, Fant it, or Pitts? Fant. Fant. All right, Lamar Jackson in your lineup. What do you do with the running backs? People oh, want to know. Tyson man. Williams. This week we have him ranked the highest of the running backs, but – through three games against inferior opponents, only giving up seven points a game, the Broncos' defense, to opposing running backs. Tyson didn't get the work despite the snaps. The confidence level has to be low on Tyson right now. It is very low. I, I do think you can flex him. Um, it, it's so tough when you look at the Broncos' defense because coming into the year, I believe they were a good defense. Like This is going to be a, a team that's tough to score on, and all they've done is super back that up, but against – Nobody, so you don't know where to go. If if you ha- if you want to start one of the running backs for the Ravens, though, it is Tyson. He has easily the most explosiveness. He's the only one kind of somewhat involved in the passing game, uh, minuscule as it is. Um, and he he's his snap percentage has been the same. He's he's out there half the snaps. Tyson or Tony Pollard against Carolina. Pollard. Tyson or Mike Davis against Washington? Mike Davis. Mike Davis. Tyson or Damian Harris against Tampa Bay? Uh, Tyson. Tyson. Okay, so that's the line. Yeah. Latavius Murray is a touchdown desperation play? Yep. If you play in touchdown-only leagues, literally where that's the only thing that scores, he's fine. Look, I'd, I have no problem with Latavius Murray, but if he could just like miss his alarm clock, you know, like on game day. You just want Freeman to get a ton more work? <laughs> Wait, no, oh, like, no, I sad. mean, I assume that he he has the hotel room with Devontae Freeman because it's just like oh, you want him to both lock the, the door on the outside. <laughs> oh, Mike, I um, don't, I don't wish ill upon them. I just want him to get catch some uh, catch some Z's. Not a great matchup this week for Hollywood after uh, the drop apocalypse. Um, Oof. I'd still play him. Rashad Bateman's back out there. I, I'd be trying to find another option than Hollywood. Yeah, I I've got a couple leagues where I've got Hollywood and it's certainly I've, to play Patrick over him. Yes, um, and I have made the move to uh, you've to been bench pivoting. Him. I d- I did unfortunately in one of the leagues I uh, benched him for Marvin Jones. No, oh, that not a great. I don't think that worked. Yeah. What about for uh, Henry Ruggs? I, um, I would play Hollywood. 
Yeah, I, I would think I would play Hollywood. Rondale as well. Moore. Hollywood. Hollywood. Man, the the ping pong ball of Rondale Moore has been uh, hilarious for fantasy. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened? Because I was I mean, realizing he was it this beloved morning, before last week. He, he was beloved because his his snap percentages was and everything just super increased. So week yes. one as a rookie, it was it was minuscule and he did stuff. Week two, they got him so much more involved and. It was the arrow trending up where you thought the week yep. three was even more involvement, and it went backwards. Yeah, as a rookie too, it's hard to hard to get a gauge of what the team's going to do week to week. I don't know if anybody saw that game, but if you want to see the highlight, he 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 muffed the punt. But what actually happened in that game was the 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 linesman threw a flag and it hit the ball in the air. It's it's you couldn't do that if you tried a hundred oh! times. And it would have been a live play that they lost the ball on. Luckily the fumble went to Arizona, but it did cost fantasy players a point. Yeah. So people that played Rondo, which was a lot of people, might have lost on a an errant flag throw, which is not the best way it's to ridiculous. lose fantasy. Um the Pittsburgh Steelers at one and two take on the two and one Green Bay Packers. Green Bay is six Man. and a half point home favorites according to the DraftKings sports book. The over under is forty five points. I see heads shaking this morning from offensive coordinator coordinator Matt Canada. The American. Oh, the yes. quote was we're gonna stick with what we're doing. Nice. Losing. <laughs> that all I can picture was a uh, like an ostrich with its head in the sand. Like please don't stick with what you're doing. <laughs> well what what would you have them do though? I mean I a genuine question with with this offensive line and this quarterback, this version of Big Ben, there isn't an answer. It's not like how was, about some movement? How about some motion? Yeah. How about some like designed plays that aren't just lining up in eleven personnel every single play? How about like involving players creatively in the offense? I mean, this is the same thing we saw last year, and maybe that speaks to your point that. There's one thing you can do with Big Ben right now, but you can snap the ball and get it out of his hands as quick as possible. That's pretty much what you can do. He so, will be just sitting in a chair behind center today, <laughs> this right. week. Yes. This week he will not be getting up. Yeah. Scoot, just scoot it forward. Yeah. Scoot. Now, now it's an it's an art chair, so it's 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 like a stool. It's uh, you know, yeah. but uh, it's like a ticket ripper at a movie theater. He'll be in one of those stools. Mm. It's so that he can move around quicker. Oh, um, <laughs> you know, they they put wheels on the bottom. Oh man, no! I, I it, honestly, the only way to improve this offense is just throw the ball more to pe- to to the youth. Just get the youth youth on the field. Deontay will help. Deontay being yep. back will help. He will he will absorb twelve targets in this game. They will need to throw the football. I'm not that excited about the Najee ground game. You're going to be sitting and hoping and praying for what we've seen recently, which is two weeks ago he was relevant because he had a touchdown in the in the passing game. Last week he was relevant because he had 19 targets. So you're going to be hoping for a screen pass that goes the distance. You're going to be hoping for targets, and you're going to be praying this offense figures some things out i tr- i just traded saquon for Najee. i wonder where you i didn't hear you guys weigh in mm. who would you rather have rest of season saquon barkley you'd rather have saquon it's it's tough because i think like week to week Najee will be more reliable and a, like a more foundational piece but he but saquon barkley just has weak winning upside that Najee doesn't have right now all right uh Aaron Jones, yeah. Yep. Devontae Adams, yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. MBS is questionable in this game, but you're not touching other wideouts. And, no. And I think there may be a Robert problem in football. Robert Woods, oh. kind of disappointing. Robert Tunyon. Robert Tunyon, kind of disappointing. What mm. Are you finding pivots on – Robbie like, Anderson? Yeah, that's is that what I mean. short for Robert? Yes, Robbie. Uh-oh. Robbie Anderson's the other one. So, um, <laughs> what? I mean, what do we think about – Robert Tunyon. It's been eight targets in three games. He had the one touchdown to salvage. What well, he would be a complete bust without that one pass. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. Uh, you know, coming into the season, it was basically we knew he was a touchdown dependent player. He doesn't get volume. He doesn't get yards. This is he's going to score. And with Aaron Rodgers, there's a good chance of that. But if you compare that to like Will Disley, who's alone now, like who's got the don't greater press, chance of a touchdown? Don't press this button. week. Um, I think it's Will Disley, so I I would probably 
Like I would rather start Evan Ingram than Robert Tunyon. I mean that's that's way down the list. I think most you know people drafted Tunyon to be your guy through the year. So you're talking about would you cut him? Because if you have to yeah. sign an Ingram or a Fant or somebody or not Fant, but Ingram or Disley or if there's a Gasicki. good option on the waivers that's you'd better cut for, than you cut him for Gasicki? Uh yeah, this this week I would. I uh, Robert Tunyon is not a guy to me that um is a must smash play every single week i would be happy to if you don't have a option better cut your guy and pick up tunyon or, or cut tunyon i would not roster two tight ends to keep robert tunyon are you benching claypool and juju in this game with the injury question marks the the ribs the hamstring i i would not i'd play them both yeah tampa bay two and one against the new england patriots one and two the brady bowl DraftKings Sportsbook line, Tampa Bay minus seven. The over-under is 49 points. I mean, this is a land of narrative street if you want to live there. I think we don't need to live there. We can just talk through these players, the decisions, and the stats we've seen so far. Um, What are you doing for New England? I mean, do you really play anybody in this game? They're at home, yeah, but... I think Jacoby Myers is... We, we brought him up, the uh, the air yards and the... He's he's actually everything been, is there. Targets every, per route run, yards per route run. Like he should be a good player, uh, and I th I think he was a a good one to stash. The the matchup is there this week against the Buccaneers because the, the way you beat him is is uh, through the air. If you're in PPR, then yes, I'm I am more than willing to play Jacoby Myers this week. Yeah. Is there anybody else on this team, including Damian Harris? That you want to mess around with? No, no. Damian Harris is very similar to, ironically, what we saw last week from his former teammate Sony Michelle, which is when you're not a guy who's super involved in the passing game, and he did get, uh, I think, two receptions last week. Sony did, and you're going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you don't have value in fantasy. Uh, so, no, I'm I'm looking to pivot off of Damian Harris. I was really disappointed in the output fantasy wise for Leonard Fournette last week when he got the start. You thought he'd get more work. Now, Geo got some passing game work, scored a touchdown, got hurt. Ronald Jones has been irrelevant. And the Patriots are a formidable defense. So Thus far, they've been really, really good. They stopped tight ends. They've stopped their top 10 at every um, important position. So would you just avoid the backfield this week for yes. Tampa? Okay. And then Evans, Godwin, Brown, all in your lineup? Yep. Brady in your lineup? Yep. yep. And then Gronkowski, uh, you know, coming home, He's been good so far. You can play him. I just think that there is a chance you get a dud game from Gronkowski this I, week. Yeah, I think it's certainly possible. He took the the major shot to the ribs this last week. He did come back in the game, uh, and we he's a little bit ribbled. He, he's he's a little ribbled. Uh, we know he took a a limited practice on Friday, so he's going to play. Uh, I imagine he will, you know, th do the things that trainers do to make your ribs hurt a little bit less during the game, <laughs> right? Uh, but I would. I would play him. There's for this. This is a narrative I'm willing to to chase of the the Brady and Gronk going back against Bill. It's funny trying to prove that they're the reason that the success happened, and more so than Belichick. Don't forget Antonio Bill, Brown. Bill yes. wants to prove it too. Oh yeah, yeah. But one team has a lot more talent. <laughs> it's like it's it's uh it's not really fair to say. Oh, Bill can want it as much as he can you know maximize his defense desire is strong in new england um the only the last thing i'll say on this game is we need to keep an eye on the Ramondre stevenson jj taylor situation james white is done for the year this is a game that i expect the uh, passing work for uh, mac jones and the patriots they're going to be throwing the ball so who is in the backfield uh, and I think they will be relevant for fantasy moving forward. We just don't know who it's going to be. Yeah, Ramondre offers the most upside after the preseason, the question marks about how they use him. So I would throw him on your bench. Agreed. And, and just see what happens. The Raiders at 3-0 and take on the 2-1 and Chargers in a battle of the AFC West. The DK Sportsvik line, the Chargers minus 3.5 at home. The over-under is 52. I'm excited for this game. This is going to be a fun Monday night game. Justin Herbert has a couple of elite weapons at wide receiver. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, they're great. And um, they're using Mike Williams differently. I don't know. Was it the Green Room show we talked about, the way they're utilizing him? Yeah. And we're kind of saying, well, you couldn't 
why did it take so long to figure out Mike Williams in this league? And part of it was injury. Part of it was Anthony Lynn in that offense. But the three games in, he's been the answer. And and he really unlocks a ceiling for Justin Herbert that I think yes, he does. we were worried yes. about. I mean, Herbert's got to play. You know, he had such a good rookie season, but it was not a lot of Eckler. He didn't get a lot of Eckler time last year. Didn't have a lot of Mike Williams last year. So there is a world where this offense can sustain these levels for a long time. Yeah, they're, they're, Mike Williams is going to be a fantasy football superstar. <laughs> what a draft pick. On the other side, <laughs> the 3-0 and Raiders, who are they for real? I don't know yet. Uh, but Derek Carr, I mean, Derek Carr, has he been under 300 yards yet? I can't imagine he is. Yeah, 435, 382, 386. Probably and, doesn't and, change in this and game. And two passing touchdowns every week. Are you streaming Derek Carr? So, uh, I, I think he we've said it, but, stream, but yeah. Derek Carr or Ryan Tannehill? Derek Carr. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a stay in the flames type of situation. Yeah, he yes, the the rules say he is on fire. Plus, I prefer to be disappointed on Monday nights versus Sunday nights. Oh, it's oh, the best. Yeah, it's, it's way, the best because because it gives you hope longer to to, Send in to the dash. Car. <laughs> Send in the car. Speaking of Derek Carr, uh, are you aware that he is the current passing leader in the NFL? Well, after those yardage numbers I rattled off, I'm not surprised. R e s p e c t. Maybe. <laughs> Never is yeah. what I heard. <laughs> Maybe uh, I said it really low. I mean, it was a little quiet, yeah, little I mean, quiet even, song. Even the car truther over there is is hedging at least a little bit. You don't victory lap. <laughs> there are some things you don't spit in the wind. Yeah. You don't tug Superman's cape. You don't victory lap Derek Carr <laughs> or AJ Green. Uh, you just you enjoy those things while they're in in the present. You don't project them. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Jacobs, Peyton Barber. Look, if Jacobs is active. This is not a comfortable situation in the backfield. Yeah, because, I would pivot. Yeah, I would pivot as well. And then Ruggs, Edwards, both are dart throws at wide receiver, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't love either. I still really, really like the Chargers defense. Um, while Derek Carr is, I think, a fine play, and Darren Waller is obviously always uh, in there, when it comes to picking out who it's going to be between Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs, and not to mention Hunter Renfro, who could actually be the the safest, uh, best PPR play, I, I think you just you pretty much avoid all the skill, all the running backs and wide receivers uh, on the Raiders side of the ball. That's that's how I view this, um, if possible. All right. Uh, so, by the way, you play Darren Waller. Yes, a goo goo good job. Are you playing? Are you playing Hunter? I am currently in. Andy's shaking his head. No. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not excited, but I am actually playing Hunter Renfro, uh, in our league of record. I mean, yeah, seventy yards, fifty-seven, seventy-seven yards. Like, I don't know. I, yeah, I guess he's. It's a floor play. He did. He was the wide receiver twelve because he scored this past week. But, yeah, yeah. We I are guess. going to give – we're giving away a Darren Waller jersey right now. Yes. At FootClanGiveaway.com if you want to head over there and enter for free. Um, he has been dominant this year, leads all tight ends and targets. So uh, beyond that, let's uh, jump into the face-off. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, it is. Let's reflect first on week three, which I won again. You did. What a great reflection that Congratulations. was. Congratulations. So, uh, but great news for me. Yeah, I didn't lose. You silver medalist. <laughs> no, you no silver medalist. Oh, I'll this take week. it. So last week, Mike. My parents still won't speak to me. No, I mean that that was fabulous though. Uh, Mike was second. I ended up winning, and Jason gets to spin the wheel of shame this week, which is wonderful. And um, are you looking forward to this? Being oh, finally man. joining the ranks. Are we yeah, ready? Is, are we ready is, for the theme? This is my first. Spin. Al, are we good to go? All right, let's spin the wheel of shame and see what Jason ends up with. Let's take her for a ride. <laughs> wheel. Oh. Of shame. You got the theme song, bro. Yeah. Now we spin the wheel. Yes. 
And uh, for those following along at home, not watching on Bald YouTube, cat Framer wig, hat, fake mustache, <laughs> and we got the baby bonnet. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> the this baby is... bonnet. Uh, Al is bringing it over. Of course. All right. Well. Uh, here you go. We did get you something a little extra. <laughs> We you we will have a uh, this is good for podcasting. You've got a baby bonnet that you need to put on, and a, we got you a pacifier. Oh, fantastic! Don't mind me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big baby. Do you blame Justin Fields for this? Uh, yes, I blame Justin Fields. I blame the Bears. I blame Matt Nagy. I blame. Uh, what about yourself? Oh no, <laughs> no, no blame. I mean, that's uh, a very Matt Nagy thing to do. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, um, week four match. You look great, by the way. Thank you. I feel uh, I feel beautiful. Uh, well, that's not the word I'd use. But week four, we've got lineups. We've got the fantasy face-off. We're on DraftKings. I've got a lineup that I want to share with you. I was thinking, should we stick with the position by position, or should we just share like the it. lineups? No, I, like the, okay. I like the position. So our quarterback this week, I'm going to go with – Josh Allen. I'm going to take him at 8,000. Okay. Uh, served me well last week against Houston <laughs> at home. I know I'm not going to lose because of Josh Allen this week. Really? Well, I went with Josh Allen. Oh, because, come on. I mean, I, I couldn't build a lineup without him. I was looking at, uh, and I'm just like, I it, this is a cash style game um, with the three of us. So. You, look, you, you, look, you look like a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I... I Hopefully it doesn't back. Yeah, get that. Get the pacifier yeah, in when you're yeah, not talking. You please. need the pacifier when you're not speaking for the entire. Segment. Uh, I I saved. I went budget shopping at the quarterback position, and I'm going to try and stay in the flames with. Please be Justin Fields. Sam Darnold taking on the how much da is he? Dallas Cowboys. He is six K. Okay. Uh, so that allowed me to do some some other things with my my lineup, but Sam Darnold. I think that they are for real, and I think that this matchup with Dallas is going to have some serious. <laughs> Serious points. He's going to town on that pacifier, and I'm a little disturbed. He's, he's teething. Uh, my running backs this week. <laughs> Derek Henry and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Henry at 8,800. Right. Clyde Edwards-Alaire is at 5,400. I like the matchup against Philadelphia and him getting involved in the passing game the way he did around the goal line, 17 carries. I think that's a bargain. And then Henry, how do you not play Henry against the Jets? Um, I had a huge regret. After building this lineup, I, I, I didn't pivot because I do still really like the lineup, but it was not having Derrick Henry in it. Uh, Derrick Henry, I assume, is in yours, Mike. He should be in every cash lineup. Um, unfortunately, he's not in mine. I went with DeAndre Swift oh, okay. That's and still fine. Clyde Edwards-Alaire. All right. How much is Swift? Swift was... It's like six-something, right? Yeah. He's, he's still in the sixes. Very, very affordable. I don't have that in front <laughs> of me. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Thanks, bro. That is part of the segment. Uh, so I have Derrick Henry as well, and then I paired him with Ezekiel Elliott. I like the price on Zeke this week. Just 6500 Yeah. Uh, and Zeke is, it was disappointing there week one, but he's been crushing. All right, wide receivers. I went with Stephon Diggs, stacking him with Josh Allen. Of course. Diggs is 7,600. We talked about unrealized air yards on the Never Not Working segment. Went with Beckham, Odell Beckham Jr. at 5,800 against Minnesota. And then I did go with Kadarius Toney at 3,300. Oh, I was wondering where you saved. Uh, today, they reported Shepard and Slayton both expected to miss the game. So Kadarius Toney is a bit of savings there at just 3,300 and taking the shot on a big play. Yeah, I this is this is where I spent. Um, my wide receivers are Devonte Adams, C.D. Lamb, and D.J. Moore. Um, so I I am going hard after three wide receivers that I think are going to be very good PPR options this week. I have D.J. Moore, of course, to stack with Sam Darnold. D.J. Moore at sixty six hundred. Uh, I have uh, this was before the the news of the limited. I built this this lineup. <laughs> Jason, uh, but I have DK Metcalf in there at 7,200, and uh, I also have Van Jefferson. Van Ooh. Jefferson against the Arizona Cardinals at just 3,900. He's he is on the field a ton. I am. He is not. He hasn't earned targets yet, but he's at least out there. And the Cardinals are. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see a KJ Osborne style Van Jefferson deep pass. I. Went with Van Jefferson in the last two weeks as that inexpensive DFS play, and so I couldn't do it again. Oh, okay. But you see him there in that price point, and you're like, man, that week one, the big play, 
My last three players, Noah Fant at tight end against Baltimore at yeah. 4,300. Went with Cedric Wilson at 4,000. And then I went with the Colts defense against Miami at 2,700. I went with the Colts defense as well. I think they were a good value at 2,700. Where I really saved up was, um, you know, my, my flex and my tight end. I went with Will Disley. I'm, oh, I'm, nice. I'm going big Montana, hoping to get that touchdown. And I went with Nick Westbrook Akeen. Uh, hoping he gets enough work in that Tennessee game because he is if he's sitting down there at 3,200. What are you gonna cry if he doesn't? <laughs> you big baby. You big baby. Uh, oh no! Uh, that's the old backfire with the yeah. pacifier. In the I apologize to everyone's ears. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike, so, close it out. I have Evan Ingram in uh, my tight end position at 3K, and my flex. Uh, this is just how they ended up building the lineup. I actually have my more expensive wide receiver. I have Odo Beckham at 5,800, so I have canceled out your yeah, Odo Beckham. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I had to go dirt cheap at the defensive position. And I went with the Detroit Lions against the Chicago Bears because it's either maybe Justin Fields is terrible again or we have a hobbled Andy Dalton. I definitely have them in some lineups because I – 2,200. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Download the DraftKings app now. Use the code BALLERS this week. New customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. And remember, use that code BALLERS. And uh, we'll see who ends up on the wrong end of this wheel of shame again next week. Enjoy the weekend. Mike will be live. On Sunday, ballerslive.com. Go yes, subscribe. I and I will see you there. Good luck, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Glenn, with a few exciting weeks of NFL action in the books, we enter week four, and DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, is putting you in the center of this weekend's actions. New customers can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize with their first deposit by signing up with our code BALLERS. Get in on the action now. It's simple. You pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up. Download the DraftKings app now and use the code BALLERS. This week, new customers get a free shot at $1 million in top prize and compete for millions in prizes across all the contests. Code BALLERS to get a free shot at the $1 million top prize with your first deposit. That's code BALLERS. Only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details.